Hi, welcome to Highland Homesteading. Today we're going to show you our trash can bioreactor. So this is a composting system and we learned it from Diego Footer. You can check out his channel on YouTube. He's got lots of good um, tips and tricks. One thing I didn't like that he said lately was that he would use Roundup in his organic garden if his cover crop got out of control and I thought that's just not acceptable so I left him a comment and he replied to me that you know it'd only be if he got really out of control with uh with them just invading his garden completely then he would uh, consider it so anyway that aside uh Diego gave me the idea for this bioreactor and I gotta share it with you because so far so good now we only have had this for I'd say maybe about six months or so we've had it all through the snow and uh, the winter and it's a little bit windy today hopefully uh, the wind doesn't affect the microphone too much we've got some big gusts which is why we keep this rock on top and we keep the trash can lid upside down because it'll collect rainwater this way and we've got a few cracks in here uh, but um, even if we, uh, and you can see there's a crack there that lets the rainwater go into this, which in Arizona, we really need to uh, keep this wet. So we have a line of drip tubing coming in. You'll see that when we open it up. This is just a Rubbermaid uh, Roughneck trash can that you can buy at any uh, hardware store, or garden store or whatever. Uh, and we've drilled half inch holes into it kind of all over the place. And the reason for that is that this uh, system is basically a system of uh, aeration for compost where you don't need to turn it as much. So that's basically the gist of it. Uh, this, hang on, we got some wind. Uh, <laughs> so this system um, is really cool because it's just kind of a set in, forget it, composting system. So what you do, there's holes drilled on the bottom as well. And I've got this little uh, half a garden rake uh, handle broken, so we just use it for this. But keep the rock on here so this lid doesn't fly off. Inside, you can see we've got this four inch diameter pipe. And you can buy these where they already have holes in them, but we put half inch holes in there as well. The idea is that the um, compost isn't more than a foot away from any air source throughout the entire system. So you can see, this is uh, compost. We kind of layered it browns and greens, but if I dig in here, you know, you can see the top isn't as composted, but as I dig into the bottom, you might see it's a little bit more moist and look at all those worms. So there's really healthy worms. And the thing is that we have this right in our garden, as you can see inside of our, our block wall and these worms just come up through those bottom holes and those holes allow, allow it to drain as well so it won't go anaerobic if you get too much moisture in there uh your your compost will go anaerobic but man we just have so many worms throughout this compost and it's looking really really good so uh as you can see like i said the top isn't as compost as the, as the bottom there's another worm but uh the, pro the reason why, I, I believe, is that it's staying too dry. So in Arizona, it is super dry, super windy today. So uh, we've got this drip hose coming in here and I'll just put it through a couple of these holes and have it spit out uh, on the other side of the, the um, pipe. But basically I'll just switch it so it goes the other way, the other way, the other way and just try to switch it just about every week so that it keeps getting moisture in different areas and it stays moist, that's kind of the idea. But the top dries out super fast, even with that lid on there. So um, so that's what I recommend. If you live in a more wet area, then you probably could leave the lid off and just let the rainwater just drip right in here. Um, you could also probably put a sprinkler on top. We've considered maybe replacing this dripper with a uh, more sprinkler type so that all of the top gets moist. And then we haven't really turned it all that much. Maybe uh, once every two weeks or something, I'll, I'll mess with the top of it. But uh, really I've just let it kind of sit here. And like I said, it's a set and forget. So it has, I must say, 
compared to our uh, tumbling composter over there, it is um, better in a lot of ways. I would say it's pretty comparable, but this one you don't have to turn it at all. You just leave it uh, and I'll give you guys an update uh, on this compost when we dump it out. We're probably gonna put it in this bed here that we haven't planted yet. And uh, you can see all of our grass is taken off. We, we put cover crop in here to try to uh, increase the carbon and nitrogen in the uh, soil here. But uh, as you can see, it's taken off on the sides of our rows and we've just been kind of uh, cutting it off at the root to try to just kill it off, but it doesn't want to get, uh, get out of there. It wants to keep growing. Uh, and that's fine. It's just sucking up some water, uh, but the roots there are really what we were after because uh, having lots of roots, we're doing a no-dig garden. So that means that we cut it off at the soil surface level and let the roots uh, remain and rot in place and uh, keep those channels for the next plants. But uh, there's our garden. We'll give you an another update video here pretty soon on the garden. But um, I just wanted to show you this small bioreactor. Anybody can create one. We actually found this trash can on Craigslist. Somebody was getting rid of it for five bucks. And I said, yeah, sure. And it kind of hurt to put holes inside of a uh, perfectly good trash can. But um, it uh, seems like it was a, a good uh, reward for the risk I was taking. This piece of uh, duct tape, this is an interesting um problem that we had at one point the bees were actually going in and out of the compost and now I believe it was because they're going after the moisture is really dry um, again here in Arizona that's pretty common but they're going in and out of this one particular hole and so I said oh no we don't want a beehive in there so I just closed it off because I wasn't going to turn this or anything and uh, we love honeybees so I figured we would uh, close that off so they find a different home but uh, Found our neighbors uh, four houses down have beehives, so um, that's really great. Uh, I'd keep beehives, but my wife is allergic, and we don't want to be using an EpiPen every time uh, we mess with the bees. So anyway, it's kind of a long video, seven and a half minutes here, but um, just wanted to show you this bioreactor, and like I said, we'll give you an update on that. So subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you get that notification when we upload that uh, update video on, on the compost show you what it's like when we empty this thing out completely probably be tons of those worms and uh, probably be real rich uh, compost so thank you so much for watching we really appreciate it click the like button if uh, you like this video if you dislike it go ahead click the uh, thumbs down uh, button but um, if you do Leave us a comment to let us know what we can improve. We really do uh, look at all the comments and appreciate any comments you can make so we can improve. I'm Nick from Highland Homestay. Thanks so much for watching. I'll have more videos for you real soon.